I got asked by a client once why she always sees the letters SPF on the lumber she buys. We normally associate these letters with sunscreen, but the truth is that much of the wood you see in the lumber yard will be stamped with these letters as well. Given our crazy lumber shortage this year, it seemed like a good time to address this question. So today I'm going to talk about what these letters mean and what their alternatives might be. And that's coming up next on The Honest Carpenter Show. So the SPF marking on certain lumber products stands for these three words, spruce, pine, and fir. These are, naturally, three types of trees. They're technically each a genus with various species below them, like spruce with the subcategory of white spruce. But why do we group them all together like this? It's because these three types of trees produce lumber with very similar qualities. And this lumber, especially in North America, is perfect for building houses. SPF woods have an excellent strength to weight ratio. If you just pick up a board, you'll notice that it's often surprisingly light. But SPF framing lumber is capable of supporting tremendous loads. It also has a fairly uniform, pleasant appearance. Knot holes tend to be small and tight, so they don't compromise the quality and structure of the wood. It also bonds with glue really well and accepts fasteners easily, but holds them firmly. So for these reasons, much of the framing and dimensional lumber that you find in stores is of the SPF variety. Now, exactly what species you find may depend on what part of the country you live in, because SPF lumber will often be sourced from mills in close proximity to certain lumber yards. SPF lumber grows on both East Coast and West Coast. West Coast species tend to be lodgepole pine, alpine fir, white spruce, and Engelmann spruce. Common East Coast species are jack pine, balsam fir, red spruce, and black spruce. These trees grow in the heavily wooded parts of the U.S., but more than 80% of the softwood lumber products we use down here come from Canada. We're talking something to the tune of four or five billion dollars worth of lumber from Canada ships to the US every year. Canada is very rich in trees. They have almost 10% of all the forest land in the world. Now, this has set off many tariffs and taxes and negotiations over the years. It's a thing that's constantly in debate. But both domestic and imported SPF lumbers are still the backbone of the US residential construction market. But down here, SPF does have a serious contender, Southern Yellow Pine. You'll see this lumber with an SYP stamp at the store. Southern Yellow Pine is another generic term because really it consists of about four main species, loblolly, shortleaf, longleaf, and slash. Whatever the species, Southern Yellow Pine looks a little bit different from SPF. We sometimes just refer to SPF wood as white wood because many of the species have this pale color. When I see that color, I know it's an SPF. I also know that the board probably doesn't weigh that much. Whitewoods feel very airy and light. Southern yellow pine, on the other hand, is a deeper yellowish color. It looks resiny, almost waxy at times. And I know before I pick it up that it's going to weigh a ton. This is because SYP has a much denser fiber composition. This density gives it a lot of strength, and that makes it perfect for many structural applications. Southern yellow pine can span greater distances than SPF lumber. There are engineering span tables which chart the performance of the two in controlled situations. This means you can literally build your house differently when you're framing with southern yellow pine because it's stronger. You can have wider, less supported floors, ceilings, and roofs. And it also makes the perfect wood for treated lumber. I've read that nearly 85% of treated lumber in the U.S. is made from southern yellow pine. That's nearly the whole market. But these benefits of southern yellow pine do mean that it's generally a little bit more expensive than SPF whitewoods. Also, it's a little harder to work with, and it doesn't take nails quite as easily because it is so dense. And as I said, it's like crazy heavy by comparison. You want to handle wider boards with a partner. I should also mention that there's another common lumber variety out there, Douglas fir. It's usually noted with a D fir stamp inside a triangle. Most Douglas fir comes out of the Pacific Northwest. It's a really attractive wood with a tight grain. It's also really strong, which makes it perfect for timber framing, where you use fewer but much larger structural members. Think ski lodges and mountain houses. Douglas fir is also very resistant to warping. This means that it's a great lumber for trim and casings. People even build boats and aircrafts out of it. Depending on where you live in the country, you may stumble upon Douglas fir quite often. It's a great wood to purchase and build with. But in my neck of the woods, central North Carolina, I'm surrounded by whitewood SPF and southern yellow pine. You're probably going to see a good amount of that too, no matter where you live. So next time you're out buying lumber, you can tap the person you're with and say, hey, do you know what SPF means? How about SYP? I'm sure they'll be dying to find out. In the future, I'm going to talk about a lot of the other information on these lumber stamps and tags. I already did a video on treated lumber chemicals, but there's way more info in these markers, so I'll get to that soon. 
But for now, what did you think of this video? Was this information new to you? Or do you examine lumber varieties every time you buy wood? Let me hear about it down in the comments. As always, thanks for watching. Be sure to check back in for more videos coming up soon. And please consider subscribing and hitting that little bell button to turn on notifications. That way you'll know the moment we post something. I'm Ethan James with TheHonestCarpenter.com. I'll see you next time.